everyone! Welcome to the second episode in this series where I have a chat with a guest about coding. Just for a bit of background about this guest, Pinko and I are friends from high school. We met in Thailand, we were in the same maths class, but we probably became friends in San Francisco thanks to business trips. Um, Pinko, would you like to like briefly introduce yourself? Where are you from? Where do you live? Yeah, uh, I grew up in Taiwan um, until I was about 10 years old, and then I moved to Thailand. And that was when I met Emily, and uh, we went to school together. I studied uh, in, in Bangkok, and then I, I moved to the U.S., to Illinois, for my university. Thanks, Finko. So let's start right at the beginning. Um, what's your coding journey? How did you discover coding? How did you start coding? Yeah, um, when I started at university, um, my major was actually in industrial engineering. I didn't go into a major that was focused on coding or software development. Um, I got into software development because of this one class, actually. I took this one class and it was this entry level uh, software development class. Um, it was computer science. Um, it was basically the one-on-one of computer science and it really got me hooked. And it was because the class was engaging and it had a lot of fun problems to solve and it really piqued my interest. So I transferred into the computer science degree in my second year. Uh, and uh, ever since I, I've been doing computer science related jobs um, and, and work and study as well. So I, I did my bachelor's and my master's in uh, computer science. Okay, nice. Yeah, so I guess you've been coding for um, a, a while now. What do you find most fun about coding? What do you love most about coding? Yeah, I love solving problems. Um, I love uh, diving into a problem and being completely immersed in it. And, you know, all steps of the way of, you know, really coding is one part of it. And maybe to just put it into perspective, you know, there's the design of it, there is the implementation of it, there's the testing of it, the analytics, and then after with the analytics coming to tune, you know, the, the software that you wrote. So um, I really love all parts of it. And really all of that is problem solving. It's, it's trying to solve some problem that you care about, that you deeply care about, or, or perhaps um, the customer cares about. Uh, and you solve that problem in, in a way that, you know, you can ensure quality in a way that you can ensure correctness. Um, so all that is, all that is um, fun. So f for those who've never coded before, why do you need code to problem solve? Um, can you not solve problems for your customers or clients without coding? Yeah, it really depends on the discipline um, that you're in, right? Uh, so there, there are probably a lot of traditional disciplines where problem solving has been done with pen and paper for, you know, for millennia. But there are also new disciplines that require coding, right? For example, uh, like web development, for example, like, you know, the discipline uh, defines what you have to do. But really, my point in bringing that up and bringing the discipline up is it's not limited, like coding is not limited to a role with, with just uh, in a discipline where there's only coding. So to expand that a little bit more, uh, why do we need coding, right? Or why do we need software development? Uh, in many ways, it's, it's faster. It even renders some problems solvable. That wasn't solvable before. Uh, one example may be machine learning, for example. Machine learning, you need a lot of computational power uh, that was only available in recent decades to make it possible. Uh, and so technology also comes in play. Uh, and and it, it, over time, it, you know, some problems become solvable because of coding. Nice. That's, that's a brilliant answer. Okay. So what do you do now? Do you get to code in your work a lot? 
Yeah, uh, I I'm a software engineer at Apple. Uh, I I do code, but I would say, like we talked about previously, there's like f- several phases to you know software development, right? There's the design of it, there's the implementation of it, the coding of it, there's the testing, coding up the tests, or you know manually testing it. Uh, there's also analytics. Uh, there's also tuning. Obviously, each part of this has, you know, the the idea of coding in it. Uh, maybe sometimes not coding on a computer, but thinking about how you're about to code. Uh, so, uh, I I do I do code at work, but I would say it's you know a a really small part of my time. At least um, maybe just twenty percent of my time that I'm actually sitting down and writing stuff. Uh, and because 80% of the time I actually spend it on uh, designing it, uh, either alone or with my coworkers, thinking about the problem with um, other experts and trying to figure out what to code. And that's actually really important. You know, I, basically I spend more time looking at the wall or looking at people than I do, <laughs> than I do actually writing it, right? Um, and that's because once you know how to solve a problem, the coding part becomes implementation. It just becomes, you know, a bit, a little bit mechanical. There's still, uh, you know, problems that, you know, within coding that you have to solve. Uh, but most of the time, at least in my case, like figuring out what to implement, it takes a bit more time. Um, and then, you know, moving on to implementation testing, like test writing uh, or manual testing. Um, there's also analytics. So writing analytics code, for example, like once you deliver the product to your customers, how do you ensure beyond just, you know, local testing that you've done at your desk? How do you ensure that whatever you develop and deliver to the end user, that they're actually using it in a way that fits your expectation. Uh, And whether there are bugs in the code that you later have to uh, fix. Uh, And so, you know, there's also a bit of coding on the analytics front so that you can get insight into your product, you know, after it ships. Uh, And then analyzing the analytics part coming back in, and that part is not coding. Uh, But that informs what you will do next, what kind of things you will code next, right? Uh, That will inform maybe, just for an example, that might inform you that, oh, you need to optimize performance on this part of the code that you may need to uh, tune, you know, this policy that you have in your code. So so that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I do at work. Yeah, and I think that's actually a really good um, point to emphasize or to, you know, let people be aware of who might be new to coding, which is when you start learning how to code, you, you often focus on the syntax and how you write in this language or, you know, when they think about coding, it's like, okay, the act of, yeah, writing lines of um programming language or something. But the reality of a job concerning coding is, you know, it has a lot of teamwork and collaboration and a lot of the work is done before the coding starts. The coding is the tool to, you know, get to what you want done. Um, But there's a lot of thinking um, involved first. Yeah. And, and, you know, very much, I mean, like language, right? I mean, you know, we talk about um, coding languages, right? Very much like a language. Uh, Of course, the language itself is hard and there is you know, from language to language, there are specific things. But once you kind of learn the language, it's now like, what will you do with it? You know, it's not just the computer language, too. There's also the language of, you know, algorithms that you use, the language of the data structure, right? And once you learn that, once that sort of easily as a, as a utility to you, uh, then it becomes, how do you use that utility to solve problems? And that part need not happen, you know, in a terminal or like in a text editor. And like, you know, that part could be a lot of 
pen and paper it could be a lot of whiteboarding yeah 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 i i remember once um i was working on a project and it was the first time ever that i think i was involved in like a software engineering type rather than a data science project and i was just amazed that i couldn't actually kind of write down any code until I had like an overview of what I wanted to build and I literally had to write it on paper like in boxes and just like rough diagrams of this is what you know this is like the pipeline or something um yeah do you have any tips or advice for people starting out with code if they're completely new to coding they're about to start their coding journey yeah um the fundamentals are very important, you know, like we said, you know, like a, like a language, for example, like knowing the syntax and all. Um, I think being able to have a strong uh, fundamental in, in coding um, or even in uh, just computer science in general. Uh, so knowing data structures, knowing algorithms, uh, that really helps with, you know, your career down the line when it comes up in design and, and, and conversations, for example. Uh, so having a strong fundamental understanding of all of that would be very helpful. Um, beyond that, I would also say we talked about disciplines, right? We talked about multiple disciplines, uh, really like where is your problem at? And, you know, I want to encourage everybody that like, you know, there, there are problems to be solved everywhere. And oftentimes they could be solved in, in new ways, interesting ways with, um, with coding. Uh, you know, things, for example, could be uh, any manual tasks, manual calculations could be automated, for example, in certain fields that you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't really traditionally think of putting coding there. Uh, but they could also, they, they could all, you know, like um, I would say, don't limit yourself to disciplines where, where you think like, oh yeah, obviously it's coding, uh, but really you can explore. I would also say, you know, as you develop, as you continue in your coding journey, um, you, you know, like be open to, there are multiple paths you can take. Like, you know, you can, you can be a domain expert in, uh, just a, a one particular technical part, uh, but you can also uh, be an expert on a higher level and be involved in design and architecture of, um, of software, for example. Um, you can also explore, for example, like data scientists, right? Um, uh, so like multiple roles, you know, doesn't have to be limited on what you started out with. Yeah, agreed. Thank you so much, Pinko. Um, that's all the questions for today. Thank you so much for your time and yeah, valuable insights. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank Bye. you. This is great.